So Odyssey Academy was established in the United States of America in the year 2015, subsequently adding a few subsidiaries in India, an institution that has given opportunity to students and teachers to not only excel in the pure traditional style of Odyssey, but also has made its mark in the Indian cultural scene of USA by organizing and hosting several Odyssey festivals across the country. O Odyssey One World is the online offshoot of Odyssey Academy, which has been hosting a once a month Odyssey festival on YouTube for the past one and a half years with the sole purpose of connecting the gurus, sishyas, and the patrons of Odyssey from across the globe on one single platform. Hello and namaskar, and welcome to the grand finale episode of O Odyssey One World. This grand finale has two parts. And this is the part one of the finale episode. And it also happens to be the 16th episode of the O Odyssey series. Today, we have an important guest with us. Let me first introduce you to Mrs. Sarita Das, the president of the Odyssey Academy, Houston, USA. She's a senior corporate executive with British. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, she's a senior corporate executive with British Petroleum. She spent her early years in Mumbai and later immigrated to the US and has been involved in spreading Indian performing art in that part of the world. So if I may take this opportunity to ask you, what would be your advice to all the artists on this forum on how to expand their network in the USA as you have been a resident of USA for a long, long time and your country is the largest consumer of Indian performing arts in the world outside of India? Thank you for the interesting question. First of all, namaskar to the gurus and very, very big thanks to the participants who have been dedicated to Orissa. And it means a lot, you know, remaining outside Orissa and not knowing the culture from your birth, but actually promoting it. That is even a bigger contribution to the art. So thank you all for that. Um, so you asked me a very interesting question, Madhu. Um, I think COVID has taught us that we are no more limited by physical presence. Personally, I would like a guru to teach me dance than a Zoom meeting or a YouTube meeting to teach me, but we have to change with time. I think the audience now is more into that. So definitely leverage all electronic platforms, which is YouTube or any other medias to promote yourself. And there are some tricks and how you get to get the uptick in those platforms and get more viewership. Those are things that you can learn from, again, electronic media, how to make your video more visible, how to, when somebody queries. So that catches, that is a promotion media for you all. I think the other platform is when we talk about the physical presence and physical connections, there are, many Indian organizations in all parts of the world. Like there is a Telugu association in France, there is a Gujarati association. Definitely make your connections in those places because they also have their network here, just like the Orissa association here is very well connected to the Orissa association in Australia. So there is constant dialoguing happening. So. One is to definitely go outside the Odyssey, Oriya groups and mix with the other non oriya groups, but Indian groups to promote because, but I sometimes feel that there are also other non Indian associations in different parts that are interested to promote and see your things. So if electronic, electronic media, you are very, very, uh, well-liked, have follow, fan following, that becomes a very good digital promotion, digital marketing for all the dancers. So that could be another media that we could use or connections we could use to promote in US. Odyssey Academy does it the best it can to promote the artists here locally in US. We work with various organizations here in US. So this is definitely a good place to start, but it's never, you know, never limit yourself to one thing. I would say just spread your wings and go to other parts. But at the end of it, it's where 
I believe quality matters than quantity. So if you are have two, three good organizations that can actually work with you, that would be a much, much, much better promotion of the art form than having 30 different organizations calling you for one minute show. Okay, thank you so much, Mrs. Das. I'm sure your tips would really help them uh, go a long way. Thank you. Now, our panel of gurus and our August panel of gurus actually need no introduction. They have been with us right from the beginning and they are actually the flag bearers of both Odissi dance and music and the culture of Odessa. I mean, most of uh, the, our audience have been meeting them every month. So today we have the privilege of learning more about them and their work in their own words to pre-recorded AVs. So I'll start with Guru Ramli Ibrahim from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So let's play his AV first. Hi, my name is Ramli Ibrahim. I'm chairman of Sutra Foundation based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I run uh, the Sutra Foundation, which was founded in 2007, but Sutra itself uh, was established, Sutra Dance Theatre was established in 1983, so that makes us almost 38 years old. Um, I started with uh, Malay traditional dances, and then when I was in Australia, I delved into classical ballet and modern dance. In fact, in classical ballet, I went through all the rigors of examination in the Giacchetti method, a very difficult method, um, and got my advanced certificate and was with the Sydney Dance Company for some times in the 70s and 80s. Later, I also became uh, uh, specialized in the Indian classical dance of Bharatanatyam and Odissi. But in the last uh, 20, 25 years ago, I started to really truly kind, kind of specialize in Odyssey. I find Odyssey uh, more suited to my temperament, really. Um, the asymmetrical quality of the three bangi balanced with the chauka position somehow um, give uh, Odyssey the kind of balance that I, I was looking for in, in dance and I was uh, under the late Guru Deva Prasad Das whose composition which was uh, uh, more Shaivite than Vaishnavite really uh, uh, gave that interesting underlying tantric uh, substance which I, I love very much in the, in the repertoire that I learned from him. Later on, I started to work, when he passed on, uh, to work with uh, his senior disciples, mainly with Guru uh, Gajendra Kumar Panda, Guru Durga Charu Nanbir, and uh, with many exposures with other um, uh, major dancers, such as Madhavi Mudgal and, and her troupe, which, which I admire very, very much, Sharmila Biswas, um, uh, with, uh, uh, with Guru Bichitrak, uh, Swain uh, from Rudraksha Foundation in Bhubaneswar with, uh, with Parvati Dutta, uh, Mira Das, uh, with Sujata Mishra, many, many dancers that come and, and go in this atmosphere of Sutra Foundation in Kuala Lumpur. A bit about Sutra Foundation. Sutra Foundation consists of three wings, you can say, Sutra Dance Theatre, uh, Sutra Academy that teaches and a Sutra Gallery that is about um, exhibitions of paintings and artworks. Well, our main uh, thrust artistically is the performance and we try to promote excellence in our dancers. We try to, to cultivate a Malaysian uh, dancers and so uh, the uh, Dance Academy part uh, in a way prepares the dancers of Sutra uh, Dance Theatre. Um, in terms of the artistic work itself, dance, Sutra Dance Theatre commissions many works, many works from uh, teachers of, uh, or dance makers uh, from Orissa. Um, and uh, this is where uh, I first commissioned our first work with Guru uh, Gajendra Kumar Panda in in uh, 1986, right after when uh, the late uh, Debuji or Guru Devaprasad uh, 
uh, thus passed on. And uh, subsequently, throughout the years, we've always commissioned him. We have uh, brought him to Kuala Lumpur with the musicians, performed, and therefore, through this, um, we have cultivated not just uh, uh, audience, but uh, also dancers, we've groomed dancers for a Malaysian train and um, and they find themselves uh, uh, very, in a way, different from those who are trained in India. I feel mainly because of my modern dance ballet background that uh, uses uh, different kind of techniques in our teaching methods. Um, Mainly, I concentrate more on the body conditioning, taking in a lot of the uh, techniques, uh, dance techniques, uh, very eclectic techniques, because I find that whatever I can use, even yoga, to prepare the dancers, and of course, we will use that. So we, we use a lot of these techniques to prepare the body first, before they are introduced to the repertoire of Odyssey. Um, the other thing that is interesting about uh, Sutra Foundation is uh, the Sutra Gallery because I managed to kind of gather around Sutra Foundation uh, a stable of very interesting artists who are interested not just in figurative but also in dance. So we were very lucky to have from Orissa the late Dr. Dinanath Pati who acted as our mentor. And of course, Guru uh, Gajendra Kumar Panda had provided a very strong input, both of them, uh, especially uh, with the art, uh, the, the cultural rich areas of Ganjam to us. And uh, I felt uh, this is where uh, I felt that Orissa became more and more exciting for me because of this cultural input from the folk traditions that I saw being fed into the classical form. So they, they painted in Sutra Foundation, they stay as resident artists in Sutra Foundation. The dancers also excite them uh, creatively, uh, always provide them with being the model for them. So in Sutra, we have all this kind of uh, uh, churning of creativity, uh, not just from dance, but from the painting side, from also the literary side, from especially Dr. Dinath Party, from the art direction, art graphic from Jyoti Swain and Ramani Jaina. These are artists from Orissa. So, um, so I think uh, this is where we we keep a close connection with with Orissa and Orissi. Namaste Ramli Bhai, it's wonderful to see the amazing work that you and your foundation is doing. Thank you so much for your tremendous contribution to the field of Odyssey. Thank you. Okay, so I would take this opportunity again to uh, ask you that you have been with us right from the first episode. So would you tell us about your experience on this Odyssey journey in the past one and a half years? Oh, well, it, it is really a, a privilege on my part. So when you, you, uh, you thank me, I, it, it's, it's the other way around. Uh, I would have to thank Odyssey Academy for, for providing uh, this platform, which is unique, uh, because it connects people from different parts of the world outside Odisha, mainly. Uh, not necessarily, um, you know, it's so uh, exclusive that, but but you know, there there's a there is you know when Odyssey transcended its national barriers, so to speak, it has to a certain extent become uh, is appreciated by by the global community, and this is something of a celebration for people in Odisha. So I've always felt that uh, you know one of the great exports certainly one of the great cultural exports of Odisha is Odyssey. And Odyssey is known all over the world. Uh, so Odisha is known by Odyssey. So I think, uh, you know, I mean, uh, this platform celebrates that. And, and I think it's important to give voice to dancers outside Odisha. But at the same time, um, it is beneficial also for for the gurus, the dancers of Orissa, because when they go out uh, uh, out of Orissa, they have they have people who know their work, who are familiar with their work, 
you know, because I work very closely with the ICC, the Indian Cultural Center, for instance, you know, so we are constantly hosting artists from India, many come from Orissa, many are Odyssey, so everyone literally passes through um, Kuala Lumpur or Singapore or Jakarta, you know, and so uh, I think uh, the platform increases this. Um, this this connection with with uh, Odisha, uh, both uh, you know we talk about not just cultural diplomacy, but we talk about the actual Odissi industry itself, which is important. So uh, I I think this platform is very unique, and I think those in Odisha, those people in institutions, should should take on and 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 uh, encourage and 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 uh, re uh, literally support uh, the, this platform which has been started by um, Siddharth Bhai and yourself uh, because it, it promotes Odyssey outside you know I mean it, it does the work of that cultural diplomacy and it's a privilege for, for, for people like me to get connected and to see other people in the same situation, uh, you know, though, um, you know, we have a direct flight from Kuala Lumpur to Orissa once upon a time before COVID. And so we go there quite often. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, that connection from the online thing was was very, very important. Very, very important to give the, the breath, I, 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 I would say, the breath of, uh, of uh, camaraderie, uh, the breath of, uh, um, of fraternity of the Odyssey, people outside Odisha. So that's fantastic. It's it's my my privilege rather than thanking uh, you, thanking me. I'm thanking really you yourself. Thank you so much. But as you just said, Odyssey has gone beyond the boundaries of Odisha, and young talents who neither speak nor understand the mm. language have so beautifully adapted themselves to the Odia culture and are trying their best to put Odissi on the world map. So how can your foundation, uh, that is the Sutra Foundation, reach out to these artists and give them an opportunity and also open new avenues for a collaboration and exchange of ideas on Odissi dance and music? Yes, um, you know, I mean, the same thing when, when uh, Siddharth Bhai was talking about ballet, you know, ballet was, it started from Italy, went to France, and it, it got, became, uh, 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 it developed in Russia, and then it come back again to the French uh, people uh, at the turn of the 20th century. So so there you are, you know, I mean, and now it's a property of the world. China has got ballet, and, and Japan has got ballet, and, you know, it, it becomes a... a a global cultural statement and Odyssey because it's one of the most exquisite uh, classical Indian dance styles truly uh, could exactly become that and I think it is on the way of becoming that I mean Sutra uh, Foundation uh, when we have ours you no know, we open ourselves to many performances from outside uh, you know, from people from Odisha, for people not just Odisha, of course, from India, but many because of our connection with with Odissi, You know, I mean, everyone has come and perform here, and uh, you know, I mean, uh, the late uh, Kaluchan Mahapatra has been here. Uh, you know, I mean, people in Kuala Lumpur are familiar with the Deba Prasad style. You know, I mean, from Shamila Biswas to Madhavi Mutkal has been here. Um, uh, 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 Sonal Man Singh Ji has been here. So, you know, so it, it has, it, it is very familiar with Odyssey and, and they've enjoyed it. And in a way, um, Sutra would continue to provide that platform, that kind of hosting for many, um, uh, many artists from Odisha. Yes. Thank you so much, Ramli Bhai. We at o Odyssey will be always looking forward to your future productions. Next, we have Guru Rabindra Atibuddhi. Can we have his AV, please? Namaskar. My name is Pandit Guru Rabindra Atibuddhi from Mumbai. My native place is Bahada Zola, Nayagara district, Orissa, India. Today, I am very happy that my life is 
लाइफ हिस्ट्री जो है मैं आप लोग के साथ शेयर कर पा रहा हूँ उड़ीसा से मुंबई तक का जो सफ़र है मेरे जीवन का सफ़र है कैसा रहा आप सबके साथ शेयर करना चाहता आठ साल की उम्र से मैंने घर छोड़ दिया था मेरे गुरुओं को पाने के लिए ये मेरा सौभाग्य है जो कि मुझे देवगुर जैसे देवगुरु गुरु पद्मश्री तारिणी चरण पत्र और गुरु जो कि गोटीपा नृत्य के थे वो देवराज मुनि गुरु देवराज मुनि उसके बाद पद्म विभूषण गुरु केलुचरण महापात्र और आदि गुरु पंकज चरण दास और गुरु मायाधर राव ऐसे महान गुरुओं को पाकर मेरे जीवन धन्य हो गया है गवर्नमेंट ऑफ उड़ीसा की तरफ से जब पहली बार उड़ीसी रिसर्च सेंटर बनाया गया था तभी दस गुरुओं को चुना गया था जो कि महान महान गुरु थे उस महान गुरु में से मैं भी एक गुरु था जो कि दस गुरुओं को लेके उन लोग नृत्य को किस तरह का उड़ीसी नृत्य को किस तरह का उन, उनका जो थ्योरी है उनकी जो अंग भंगी है उनकी जो नंबर्स है जो शुरुआत का होता है नंबर्स ये सारे चीज़ को और थ्योरी के साथ उसके शास्त्र को जो बनाया गया था तभी हमें गवर्नमेंट चार साल का हम लोग को फेलोशिप देकर रिसर्च के लिए रखा था और हम उसी समय हमारे महान महान गुरु लोग थे जो कि आदि गुरु पंकज चरण था गुरु थे पद्म विभूषण गुरु कलूचरण महापात्र के तरफ से ये सारे चीज़ बहुत अच्छी तरह किया गया था गुरु माधर राउत जी थे और ऐसे महान महान जो गुरु थे गुरु उनके साथ कुवनेश्वर मिश्रा जो कि उड़ीसी नृत्य का जो आज तक जो भी जितने सारे म्यूजिक है उस म्यूजिक को उन्होंने बनाया था वही सब गुरुओं के गुरुओं के आशीर्वाद के तले हम लोग सब नृत्य का जो रिसर्च है कर रहे थे उस समय ओडिसी रिसर्च सेंटर के मुख्य अधिकारी पद्मश्री कुंकुम महंती थे और जितने सारे हमारे उड़ीसा के जैसे कोणार्क कोणार्क मंदिर राजा रानी टेम्पल और अलग अलग जितने सारे टेम्पल थे जिसमें कि उड़ीसी के स्कप्चर थे उस स्कप्चर को जब भी उड़ीसी में डाला जाता था तो मुझे लेकर मुझे वहाँ पर खड़ा करके वहाँ के जितने भंगिमाएँ हैं उड़ीसी नृत्य के भंगिमाएँ हैं और उस चीज़ को मेरे शरीर में मेरे अंग में उसको दिखाया जाता था और उसको लिख कर ले कर आते थे और रिसर्च के अंदर उसको डाला जाता था इसलिए मैं बहुत खुशनसीब हूँ कि मुझे लेकर ये चीज़ को उन्होंने आ, करते थे सारे गुरुओं की आशीर्वाद मेरे ऊपर बहुत रहा ऐसा ही कई सारे अनमोल एक्सपीरियंस लेकर मैं दिल्ली रवाना हो गया दिल्ली में तीन साल रहने के अंदर मैंने उड़ीसी नृत्य सिखाया और क्लास भी किया और बहुत सारे प्रोग्राम भी किया प्रोग्राम के बाद फिर मैंने मुंबई रवाना हो गया 1969 में मैं जब दिल्ली से मुंबई आया तो दिल्ली मुंबई और महाराष्ट्र में उसी समय उड़ीसी नृत्य नहीं था और फर्स्ट टाइम मैंने उड़ीसी नृत्य को इंट्रोड्यूस किया और उसके साथ साथ पूरा प्रचार भी किया मुझे याद है 1969 सितंबर 22 वो डेट में मैंने मुंबई में पहुंचा और मेरे पास कुछ भी नहीं था ना घर था ना वार था कुछ नहीं था ना पैसे भी थे अकेला किस तरह का मैंने रहा होगा किस तरह का मैंने उड़ीसी नृत्य उड़ीसी उड़ीसा श्री जगन्नाथ ये नाम को मैंने आगे बढ़ाने के लिए सारा दुनिया में प्रचार करने के लिए मैंने ठान लिया कि नहीं मैं यहाँ पे रहकर सारा दुनिया में मेरे उड़ीसी नृत्य को प्रचार करूँगा सभी दिन आया था जो कि मुझे खाने को नहीं था सोने के लिए प्लेस नहीं था और रहने के लिए जगह भी नहीं था और ये एक कलाकार के लिए समझ लेना चाहिए कि उसने अपने कला को अपने जीवन बनाकर 
किस तरह का संघर्ष किया होगा इस समय संघर्ष करने के बाद मैंने एक उड़ीसी कला क्षेत्र इंस्टीट्यूट बनाया और उसी इंस्टीट्यूट में एक से दूसरे दूसरे से तीसरे कई स्टूडेंट धीरे धीरे तैयार होने लगे और उसके बाद मैंने रजिस्टर रजिस्टर किया जो कि नाइन्टी में नाइनटीन हंड्रेड नाइन्टी में मेरे इनवर्सियल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डांस म्यूजिक एंड आर्ट इंटीग्रेशन इस नाम का जो कि उदमाई बोलते हैं जैसे यू आई डी एम ए आई उस नाम का एक इंस्टीट्यूट किया जो कि मैंने महाराष्ट्र गवर्नमेंट का ही रजिस्टर्ड इंडिपेंडेंट 2000 में मैंने 50 ओडिसी नृत्य का प्योर ओडिसी नृत्य का कोरियोग्राफ किया था ओडिसी नृत्य के जो आइटम्स होते हैं जैसे मंगलाचरण पल्लवी पल्लवी कम से कम मैंने ट्वेंटी से ओवर पल्लवी बनाया है जो पल्लवी था उड़ीसी नृत्य के आधार पर उड़ीसी नृत्य का जो भंगिमा है और संगीत है ये सारे चीज़ को लेकर मैंने हमारे जगन्नाथ जो संस्कृति है उस जगन्नाथ संस्कृति का जैसे कि रथ यात्रा पल्लवी जैसे कि टाहिया पल्लवी जैसे कि चंदन पल्लवी जैसे कि बटवृक्ष पल्लवी ऐसे कम से कम 20 से लेकर 22 तक मैंने कोरियोग्राफ किया है जो कि एक एक सुंदर भाव से वो सब आता है जैसे कि अगर उस नृत्य को देखें जैसे आप रथ यात्रा नृत्य को देखेंगे रथ यात्रा को देखें या उस नृत्य को देखें पल्लवी को वो पल्लवी के अंदर सारे उड़ीसी के पोज उड़ीसी के भंगिमा उड़ीसी के संगीत के साथ आपको पूरा रथ यात्रा की भाव दिखेगा वो रथ यात्रा ही दिखेगा अच्छा गीत गोविंद के जो जो गीत रह गए थे वो गीत को और चंपू चौपती जो जो हमारे उड़ीसी उड़ीसा के बहुत बड़े बड़े राइटर थे बड़े बड़े जो लिखे हुए जैसे गोपाल कृष्ण और भक्त कवि बनवाड़ी दास और चंपू चौपती ये सारे चीज़ को उपेंद्र भंज जी के जो है जो उन्होंने जो कविता लिखे हैं उसके ऊपर मैंने बहुत सारे अभिनय को भी बनाए और नृत्य नाटिक में श्री राधा प्रेम लीला श्री कृष्ण लीला श्री राम लीला और महाभारत जैसे कई प्रकार के बहुत सारे मैंने कोरियोग्राफ किया है इन्हीं कोरियोग्राफ को लेकर मेरे सारे स्टूडेंट्स जो कि सीनियर स्टूडेंट्स हैं उन लोग को लेकर मैंने इंडिया में मतलब नेशनल और इंटरनेशनल में बहुत सारे प्रोग्राम किया और बहुत सारे डेमोस्ट्रेशन किया और बहुत सारे वर्कशॉप किया और उसके साथ साथ मुझे कई सारे नेशनल और इंटरनेशनल लेवल के एवार्ड से नवाजा गया है जैसे कि उड़ीसा संगीत नाटक एकेडमी एवार्ड और वर्ल्ड फ्रेंडशिप एवार्ड जो कि यू में मिला था और फूड फेस्टिवल एवार्ड जो कि जर्मनी में मिला था ऐसे कई सारे एवार्ड्स मिला हुआ है और उसके साथ साथ बहुत सारे फेलिसट किए हैं जैसे कि उड़ीसा संगीत नाटक एकेडमी एवार्ड वर्ल्ड फ्रेंडशिप एवार्ड यू एस ए और जर्मनी फ्रांस ऐसे अलग अलग प्रकार के भी एवार्ड उन लोग से भी मिला हुआ है और उसके साथ साथ इंडिया में भी कई सारे जैसे कि सुर सिंगार संसद जो है बम्बे का उसमें श्रृंगार मणि एवार्ड और हरिदास सम्मेलन एवार्ड और बहुत सारे ऐसे एवार्ड मिलने के बाद कई फेलिस्टेशन भी किया गया है और उसके साथ साथ एक श्री कृष्ण रासलीला जो कि गीत गोविंद हमारे उड़ीसा के सबसे मुख्य 
स्टोरी होता है उसके ऊपर हमारे गवर्नमेंट और एक प्रोड्यूसर मिलकर एक श्री कृष्ण रासलीला एक फ्यूचर फिल्म जो कि फर्स्ट इस्टमिन कलर उड़ीसा में ही बनाया गया था फर्स्ट इस्टमिन कलर कभी तब तक इस्टमिन कलर बना नहीं था और उसमें थर्टी सिक्स सॉन्ग थे जो कि आज तक कोई भी फिल्म में थर्टी सिक्स सॉन्ग नहीं तो उसी के कारण उसमें मैंने बारह रोल किया था कृष्णा का रोल किया था मैन जो हीरो था मैंने हीरो का निभाया था और उसमें मैंने जो बारह प्रकार के रोल लिया था और उसकी अच्छी तरह निभाया था एक्टिंग को अभिनय को जो फिल्म बना था वो उड़ीसी नृत्य के आधार पर ही हुआ था जिसको कि डायरेक्शन दिए थे पद्म विभूषण मेरे गुरुजी गुरु केलोचरण महापात्र और उसका डायरेक्टर थे सोनू मुखर्जी और उस फिल्म को भी नेशनल अवार्ड मिला और मुझे भी नेशनल अवार्ड उस फिल्म फिल्म से ही मिला था मुंबई में नालंदा रिसर्च सेंटर में 36 ईयर उड़ीसी नृत्य को शिक्षा दिया और उसके साथ साथ बांद्रा में शारदा संगीत विद्यालय करके एक विद्यालय है उसमें भी कम से कम 12 से 15 साल तक मैंने उड़ीसी नृत्य को शिक्षा दिया नालंदा डांस रिसर्च सेंटर में रहने के समय पे वहाँ पे एक हैंड बुक ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इस टाइप का एक बुक निकला था उसमें मैंने मेरा उड़ीसी नृत्य का रिसर्च रिसर्च फेलो करके इस टाइप का मैंने मेरा लिखा हुआ है उसमें मैंने लिखा है उसके बाद मैं एक सोचा कि इस जमाने के लिए ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी ट्वेंटी वन सेंचुरी के अंदर तक जो उड़ीसी नृत्य को शुरू से लेकर आज तक जो भी हो रहा है उसके ऊपर मैंने कुछ लिखूं और प्रभु के दया से जगन्नाथ जी के कृपा तो मैंने संस्कृत में लिख रहा हूं और उस ग्रंथ शायद इसी साल का इस साल मतलब 2022 के एंड एंड तक मैं उस ग्रंथ को निकालूंगा अब ये बुक पब्लिश होगा तब आप लोग के प्यार आप लोग के आशीर्वाद आप लोग जरूर मुझे दीजिएगा जय जगन्नाथ नमस्कार so unfortunately we don't have uh, guru ji joining us today he could not because uh, he had uh, he had some prior engagement in a, in fact a family uh, ceremony at uh, in orissa in bhubneshwar so he could not join us today but thank you guru ji uh, for giving us a glimpse into your work and life we cannot thank you enough for your contribution to odissi next we have guru Mandira Balkaran Singh. So, can we see what she has to say? Mandira Balkaran Singh was born in Delhi, India and migrated over to Trinidad and Tobago in the late 70s. She was not able to find work despite having a masters. Subsequently, they chose to propagate Indian classical dance and they did it for the passion and love, not money. Nirdanjali means an offering to the fine arts, specifically to dance. Nritya meaning dance and Anjali meaning offering. She together with her husband at the time, Dr. Balkaran Singh, founded the troupe in Trinidad and Tobago. Their intention for attempting to teach 
Kathak and Odyssey in Trinidad is because Trinidad had teachers teaching these particular dance styles, but they were never here for long. They always just visited and they did not go in depth into the art form. Dr. Balkaran Singh and Mandira wanted to change that. The company began in Rio Claro, where the instructors would leave their home in Trinity every Sunday at 8 a.m. to reach down for 10 a.m. and teach until noon. The basis was Kathak, a form of dance. There they formulated the beginnings of the theatre, performed Kathak, and then started Odyssey in the early 80s. They did a lot of lecture demonstrations to teach the public about the classical and historical aspects of the thousands-year-old practice. The themes were typically apolitical and non-religious regarding folk dances. They were popularized based on the fact that there were less restrictions than classical dance and were easier to understand as a result. While classical goes beyond religion, even if the stories are formulated from the fabulous Indian mythology, their approach was to teach it as a classical art. Rituals had to be observed, such as showing up clean, having your hair done, and not wearing shoes. Performing the Namaskar was also important. It is a practice where one bows to, down to God, the teacher or guru, as well as the audience. It means I respect the divinity within you, and vice versa. In Kathak and Odissi, it is actually touching Mother Earth on whom we stamp, asking for forgiveness for any missteps seeking the blessings from the ground, because we believe that energy comes from the ground. Before any practices or performances, we end and start with the Namaskar. In 1994, they were incorporated by an act of parliament and the Netanjali Institute of Classical Indian Dance as a non-profit organization began. They were invited to esteemed events at the Little Carib Theatre, the President's House and the Prime Minister's House. They then represented the governments in many countries as part of a delegation promoting the Indian classical dance and relating it to the Trinbagonian culture. In that aspect, one of the first ballets they performed was Penal Harvest. It was first performed in 1981 and repeated in 1985 with local singing, local musicians, and written by Dr. Satnarayan Balkaran Singh about a small farming village in Pinal. They realized by doing ballets based on stories of the divine and classical forms was more relatable to the Indian population in Trinidad and made it easier for them to digest. In 1994, they were awarded the Hummingbird Medal, and they haven't stopped since. So Guru Mandira also unfortunately could not join us today as uh, she's not feeling too well. So, I mean, these are difficult times. A lot of people are down with COVID. So, but uh, I think, uh, I hope it's not that, but uh, I think she just couldn't join because she wasn't feeling too well. So thank you, Guruji, for your contribution to the world of Odyssey. Next, we have Sangeet Natak Academy awardee, Guru Sangeeta Das. She's from Puducherry or Pondicherry, India, and has been an Odyssey dancer for the past four decades, running her own institution in Pondicherry for many years now. Apart from the Sangeet Natak Academy Award, she has been decorated with the prestigious Mahari Award and also the first recipient of the Pankaj Charan Das Award. Next, we have with us Guru Jayashri Mahapatra. She is a disciple of the legendary Kelu Charan Mahapatra and Raghunath Datta. Though she has been a resident of North America for many years now, she has kept her connection with her roots alive through her dance and has dedicated her life to the cause of spreading Odissi through teaching, conducting workshops, delivering lectures, and organizing large Odissi events, both in USA and Canada. Welcome to the show, Guruji. It's great to have you here today. So you, ha uh, you have been with us right from the onset of the o Odissi series. Please tell us about your experience. I'll be very short. My apology. I have a toothache. And um, first of all, thank you, Siddhartha Babu, for inviting to this panel. And thank you, Madhavita, for moderating this. It's a wonderful 
um, I cannot express myself like it is a wonderful experience to go through, to be the part of this panel and part of the OODC. It's a great platform to bring the great heritage and culture of Odisha to global audience. It's an excellent journey. I enjoy it very much. Can't talk too much, but I truly enjoy it meeting all the gurus from all over the world, meeting all the artists from all over the world. Great work. And in future, if I can be any help, I can, I can be part of the uh, OODC again. Thank you so much. So Guruji, would you like to take one more question or you are done with all the questions? Briefly, I can say. I can. Okay, <laughs> fine. Okay. So you know that this platform has managed to build a community of talented Odyssey artists across the globe. Would you and your academy make an effort to collaborate with these artists for any upcoming performances or shows in US or Canada? Definitely. Definitely. And I am trying my best. Even in the past, I did um, collaborate with other gurus or uh, like when they are in USA, they come to Massachusetts and um, we do the workshop or the performances. And even many times we, me and Siddhartha, we were talking about collaborating each other, <clears throat> inviting their students to Boston or our students to Texas. So it's a, I have done this and I'll be uh, very much happy to welcome all the participants to come here uh, to do workshop or performance, any kind of to promote the ODC, I can help that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guruji, and uh, we wish you a speedy recovery. Thank you. So, so now let's on, let's move on to the performances of the day. The first artist performing for us uh, today is Irina Komisarova from Moscow, Russia. She's a member of the well-known Odyssey troupe called Omkara, supported by Guru Sujata Mahapatra. So let's enjoy her performance.
So our second performer is uh, Corinne Leblanc from Paris, France. Corinne is an active uh, Odyssey teacher in Paris. 
So she has been conducting uh, workshops and also teaching students in Paris for a long time now. So let's enjoy her piece. Oh, oh, oh. 
to see you perform for us again. So if you can just take this again, take this opportunity to ask you, how do you think you can use the Odyssey Academy platform to communicate and collaborate with other artists? Namaskar. Um, I think it has been a great opportunity to realize we are actually a community all over the world. And um, especially during the COVID time, it was, it is actually because it is still going on. We are kind of isolated and what you're doing, uh, it's absolutely great and lovely and it's absolutely full of love. And we do share this feeling of uh, wanting to spread Odyssey and we're working to the same direction. And that, that's, a, that's what I realized performing with all the artists because it's only like solo performances, but it's a feeling that we are together sharing the art. And thank you for that. Thank you, Karine. Thank you so much. Our next dancer is Okasana Koleva from again, Moscow, Russia. She's also a member of the Odyssey performing troupe Umkara, which is supported by Mrs. Sujata Mahapatra. Please welcome Okasana Koleva. Namaskar. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Hey, 
So thank you, Oksana. That was a very enjoyable performance. So tell me, how has this Odyssey experience helped you in connecting with the larger world of Odyssey diaspora? And how would you like to take advantage of that? Uh, hello, everyone. Namaskar. <laughs> um, 
the change uh, are significant. Many dancers of uh, the style have been added and embraced, uh, which leads uh, to the unification, integral connection of those who practice and live at DC. And this is wonderful, really. Uh, the experience has helped and helping to theater, uh, strengthen uh, ties with the world diaspora of Odyssey. Since the borders uh, are not all open, it's true. Uh, platforms of both Odyssey and mixed styles are um, um, increasingly uh, being created uh, where I, we dancers, uh, can show the arts of Odyssey to the world. I think uh, that was just the beginning for Odyssey. The most interesting and uh, exciting will be ahead. And for me, uh, it means to touch something uh, sacred and spiritual once again. I want to humbly thank all the gurus who have been with me, uh, evaluated and uh, supported me. And I also want to express my great gratitude and appreciation to uh, Siddhartha Ji and Madhumita Ji uh, for the incredible work and unification. Thank you, thank you very much. And pranam for all. Thank you, Oksana. Thank you so much. So next we have Gudrun Martins from Hamburg, Germany. She has been teaching classical Odyssey for a decade now and also is known for her experiments with fusion dances, that is Odyssey with other Western classical dances. So let's watch some of her choreographies.
was a fabulous presentation. Thank you so much. So Gudrun, since uh, you like experimenting with your dance, do you think collaborating with the various talented artists of this platform is a real possibility sometime in the near future? So thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm, uh, I'm very uh, surprised and pleased that you choose uh, my item because I also send a traditional item. So um, uh, it's uh, making my heart beat fast because of course that is my work. So, I, so there's a lot of uh, uh, heart blood in that. Now my first, uh, my first intention and my first uh, like focus is of course on um, promoting Odyssey, on dancing Odyssey, on showing the beauty of this art form to the world. So this is, uh, this is uh, where my, my focus lies. But as I am, as so many others of you are in the diaspora of Odyssey, um, I have come uh, to the insight that uh, you need to touch the, or you to reach the people, reach out to the people where they are. And, um, and I think we have to make sure that Odyssey is not seen as an ethnic dance, like a folk dance, which is uh, done by a folk group only, in Orissa, in Orissa or in India, but that it, this dance, as has been said before, has so much opportunities because it's uh, so beautiful and it's, it's a whole language which can be used to express uh, a lot of things. So I, I would like to bring that forward um, to the audience that uh, this is not just 
just something Indian, but this is something which is uh, part of the, of the world culture and it needs to be there and needs to be seen like that. So um, this, this dance and uh, other dances have evolved out of the need to work with other artists because uh, I'm the only Odyssey dancer in, in Hamburg and uh, for a long time in, in uh, Germany, in fact, so it's nice that a uh, lot of other dancers are coming up now. But uh, I was approached by musicians in Hamburg um, for a col collaboration. So that, of course, is very nice to have the opportunity to work with live music again, because everybody who has performed with live musician knows that it's so much more energetic and, and uh, there is interaction, which, uh, ma which makes the dance much more alive than performing with the recordings. So of course, I, I'd love to collaborate like with other dancers, with musicians and develop more, <laughs> create more. Thank you for the opportunity. And it's, uh, it, was a, it was a lovely experience being part of this festival. Thank you, Gudrun, thank you so much. The next performer is Virag Rikaturi from Budapest, Hungary. Virag runs an Odyssey school in Budapest. We will show you an AV of her school and thereafter a group dance performance with her disciples. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you for a lovely performance, Virat. So tell me, because of ODC and the ODC Academy, you are now part of the larger community of ODC artists. Uh, wouldn't you like to leverage on that by going in for collaboration and exchange programs with artists from other countries? First of all, uh, it was a great honor to be part of this program. And it was uh, great to see many and another, uh, uh, many artists from another country and special thanks for the organizers. Um, so we gone through uh, a lot of changes in last two years in this pandemic time. So I tried to continue teaching dance uh, as before online, of course. And uh, in, in the meantime, uh, we also got into online presentations. Uh, personally, me, I don't really appreciate online presentations. I, I'm really waiting for the live uh, programs again. So uh, if, if there will be another, if there will be an opportunity in the future, I would like to organize a joint program here, maybe with another dancer from another country, uh, even a theoretical uh, lecture or practical workshop uh, to see if how, how dancers teach ODC in another country. And we, we are really open for that here in Hungary. So ODC is not uh, widely known in Hungary uh, and such a program could be a good opportunity uh, to get to know it here. 
So, um, and what else? Uh, of course, uh, of course, uh, with with all of with my students and me, I I can I can travel also to uh, to other countries and uh, who are really, really interested in uh, Odyssey. We we happily perform there too. And uh, yeah, and I think that's all what I can tell now. Mm, so I have plans, and let's see the future. I hope and pray for for the future. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Virag. Thank you. Our last performer for this episode is Maria Laura Valdez from Arequipa, Peru. Let's sit back and enjoy her performance. Thank you. 
choreography and dance. Thank you so much. So tell us, Maria, how do you think this platform will help you in reaching out to other artists in different countries? Namaskar to everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Siddhartaji and all the gurus for, for being here supporting us. And uh, it has been wonderful for all of us to, to be able to get feedback from different gurus uh, from different places in India and outside of India and uh, being able to notice like from other dancers. And I think uh, I, I have been blessed to have met some of the dancers personally back in Bhubaneswar, but at the same time, there are many others that I have not been able to meet before. So I feel it has been um, a wonderful chance for all of us to, to see how Odyssey has spread all over the world and to see how everyone is so dedicated to it. And they are doing their, the best as they can. Um, however they can, and uh, especially during these hard uh, times where things have changed so drastically for everyone. And it's been for me at least like a little taste of what it used to be like when I was living back in Bhubaneswar with all the community uh, all together trying to support each other to grow as dancers and um, being foreigners. It was always like uh, necessary to have this support, like um, I would say sisterhood or brotherhood, this kind of thing. So this is how I feel. And um, also that uh, we have been able to see uh, the work of each other in their own country. It's also amazing how everyone is standing in their own country. For me, it's the first time I am in my own country for so many years, to be honest. Like I am kind of stuck in my country since 2019 until now. And uh, it inspires me to see everyone's work and uh, how, how they carry Odyssey in places where mostly it's not so known because I have been used to to be in Orissa all the time or in India where it's like normal already. I don't have to explain so much. So I get inspiration for, for continue the work in here um, with my students. And I am able to now reach to Bolivia as well, which is a place where there is no yet Indian classical art forms, but it's starting. And um, I, I just feel tremendously happy and inspired by everyone. 
And like, if anyone wants to ever come to my country, which is a small one, but <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just developing towards Indian classical dances and art forms generally, please come. I will be so happy to collaborate with any of you. <laughs> so thank you so much for it, for everything, for all the efforts. Thank you, Maria. Peru might be, Peru is not a small country. It is a beautiful country, in fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so with that, we come to the end of the part one of this, of this grand finale episode. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for being such a support and always being so encouraging. We will continue with the second part of the finale episode. So see you there. Namaskar.